everybody, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be doing a cash envelope storage and haul video. Let's get started. So the very first thing we're going to be doing is talking about storage, how we store our cash envelopes. Everybody does this a different way. Some people put them in a wallet and carry them around with them at all times. Other people like us, we keep them in a separate little box and then we take this box and put it into a safe we have in our house. So as you can see here, this box has a little clasp, it has a handle. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down. This way, I got this box from TJ Maxx a few years back and it's the perfect size for me to be able to store all of my cash envelope things and to be able to put it straight into the safe and take it out with ease. So I haven't cleaned this out, I haven't changed anything. I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up and show you guys exactly what we use when we stuff our cash envelopes and how we store them inside this box. So right here, the clasp on the front, I'm just gonna push it open. And here right on top, you guys might recognize this. This is our bullet journal that we use um, each week when we are stuffing our cash envelopes. We keep track of everything in here. If you are curious to see our bullet journal flip through, I'll go ahead and link it in the right hand corner up above. You guys can go ahead and watch and see what we write on each of these pages. So underneath that, we have some pads of sticky notes. I actually have two different pads in here. I like to use sticky notes a lot. I am a teacher, so sticky notes is something that I use all the time. I just like to write down notes. I can put them onto different cash envelopes if I need to or different notes for videos. So I have two pads of sticky notes. Next, we have our sinking fund charts. This was another video. I'll go ahead and link this video down below if you guys have any questions on sinking funds. I actually have these charts as Google Docs also that you're able to make a copy of if you would like to keep track of your sinking funds that way. And next I have a pack of 24 Crayola crayons. Like I said before, I am a teacher. I like to be able to color things in, keep everything colorful. So crayons work just well for that. And I go ahead and keep them in the box. And also we have our envelopes. As you can see, they fit very nicely in here. These are not all the envelopes that I have total. I'm gonna to do a haul of each of these envelopes. I'll do a close up so you can see each one of them. But these are the current envelopes that we are using for the month of June. Plus our emergency fund envelope always stays in here because we have our thousand dollar emergency fund in there as well. We like to keep that nice and safe. So I'm gonna go through these envelopes in just a second, but I'm put these to the side so I can finish the rest of the box. So next we have some different things. We have these Pentel touch markers that I've talked about before. So I'll go ahead and grab all these guys. These markers work pretty well for our bullet journal. They're probably not the best. They have the brush tip, which I can't decide if I like that or not. It works nice for some of the calligraphy writing that I like to do, but I really like these because they don't bleed through the paper and I also already had them on hand, so they work perfectly. So I leave these in here for those. Oh, I guess I have a one of my indigo crayons is <laughs> off to the side. And then I have a few different types of pencils. I actually, this is, I know some people are not going to agree with this, but this Papermate pencil is actually my least favorite type of pencil. I write super hard and this lead always pushes in. So I just keep this own one around for the eraser. But then I have just a Bic um, mechanical pencil and then a regular pencil without an eraser. I like to sketch each of my bullet journal entries before I go in with the marker or crayons. So you guys have probably seen that before, but I keep a couple different pencils in here. I also keep some whiteout. There are times when I'm using the markers or pens and whiteout comes in handy if I ever make any mistakes. And then I have just a few different colorful pens. Here I have an orange pen and a purple pen to make notes or to write on those sticky notes. I have just a black ballpoint pen as well. And last but not least, I have this gold metallic marker that um, I haven't quite used yet, but a few times I've almost reached for it, but I just keep it in here just in case. 
So those are all the things that we keep in this box with our cash envelope. I'm gonna go ahead and put the supplies back in and then I'll zoom you guys in and talk about those cash envelopes in a little bit more detail. So many of you know the cash envelope system was made famous by Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey is who has inspired our debt-free journey and we use the cash envelope system based off of his seven baby steps. So as we start going through these envelopes, you're gonna see a lot of them that we don't even use, things that aren't necessary. You don't need all these envelopes in order to follow Dave Ramsey and his plan and to start the baby steps. So if you are looking at these envelopes, you might start to feel a little overwhelmed. That's how we felt when we first started. So we really, when we started back in September of 2018, we started completely backwards. I made an envelope for each and every single thing. I'm gonna show you those envelopes in just a little bit, but we quickly realized that I had way too many envelopes for what was happening. So if you are first starting out with Dave Ramsey and his baby steps, I would suggest that you just have these first few envelopes that I'm gonna show you right now. So the very first envelope is the emergency fund envelope. The baby step one for Dave Ramsey is to collect a total of $1,000 in your emergency fund. Now we have it here in cash. We do not put this into the bank. Once we get to baby step three, which is to save up four to six months of expenses for your emergency fund, then we'll probably transfer this into the bank. But for right now, this works for us. Since we started in September, we only had to use our emergency fund once. And since then, we've been able to build it back up and we keep it nice and safe in our box with the rest of our envelopes. And next up is baby step two. Baby step two is the debt snowball, getting rid of all of your debt. And we have a video on baby step two. Also, I will link that down below, but I'm just gonna show you the envelopes that we used during baby step two. Our first debt, smallest to largest, our first smallest debt were our taxes. We had a little bit of trouble with our taxes right before we got married, and it took us a little while to get that all cleared up. So we use this envelope only um, once we were able to pay off that first debt, then we no longer use this envelope anymore for right now. Um, maybe later on if when we're saving up for taxes we'll still use this but that first debt is completely paid for so we no longer need to use this envelope the next debt that we have debt number two is my husband's car his car loan my car is paid off completely his car we still do the monthly payment each month and then all of our extra money goes into this envelope so while we were saving up for our taxes, we were still paying the minimum amount on his car payment, and now we snowballed the extra, we did $2,000 a month, we snowballed that, that $2,000 into his car payment, so now for his car payment, we're paying $2,000 on top of his monthly payment. And our next debt after we are done with his car, once it's paid off completely, which it should be by November of this year, then we will continue to pay that monthly car payment plus the $2,000, but we will roll that into the monthly payment that we are paying for my student loan. So that's the snowball effect. It started off by paying minimum payments on each of these plus 2,000 for the taxes. And now we have that 2,000 plus this minimum plus this minimum rolled in to our student loan. So once we are done with our student, my student loan payment, which should be by April of 2020 is when we should be debt free, then we'll be done with each of these envelopes. Once we are debt free in April of next year, we will start continuing to put that exact amount of money that we were paying towards my student loan into this envelope and we'll be starting our baby step three. Baby step three is saving up four to six months of expenses for an emergency fund. Since my husband is self-employed, we're gonna go ahead and do these six months of expenses and we'll do continue to do the same thing. When he brings his cash home, we'll stuff it into the envelope and then we'll have this money saved up in just a few months as well. Once we get that all filled up, we'll transfer the $1,000 from our original emergency fund plus all the money we saved up in this envelope, we'll go ahead and transfer it to a separate money market account into our bank. So it's no longer stashed here in the house in our safe that we have here, but we'll stash it in a more secure location. 
After baby step three comes baby step 3B, which we have an envelope for. This is saving up for a down payment on a house. We live here in California, so that down payment is quite an expensive one. So as soon as we are done with baby step three, we'll continue to save up for baby step 3B. Next up, we have a stack of envelopes that you might be familiar with. If you watch our cash envelope stuffing videos, you'll probably recognize most of these envelopes. These are the envelopes that we keep inside of our little storage container because we use them each month and each of them have money in them each month as well. I've had a few people ask why we already have money in some of these envelopes even if we haven't stuffed them for that week yet and it's because even though we stuff money into each of these envelopes we don't pay or we don't use the money each week. So for example our car registration is not due every week or even every month it's only due once a year so we are using this as a sinking fund which again I've linked our sinking fund video down below. We use this as a sinking fund fund so we pay a minimum payment to ourselves each month so that when our car registration does pop up we are all set ready to go just grab this cash take it and put it into the bank and we can pay off our car registration same type of thing for our renters insurance we have our money in there Amazon Prime plane tickets. We are going on a vacation to Hawaii very soon. So this is the last time that we're going to have money in here for this vacation. Car maintenance. We put money into this envelope each month, even though we're not typically needing car maintenance. We have money saved up in case we ever need new tires and oil change, all that type of stuff. My husband and I are at that time where, where weddings is something that is happening almost every weekend in our life right now. So we are constantly saving up for weddings, for gifts and different things. We have our church offering fund. We keep this um, filled and take it with us each week. Costco envelope. We have a clothing fund for my husband and I as well. We have money in here saved up for whenever we need money. So we don't spend it each week or every single day, but we have it all filled up and ready to go for when we do need something. Our anniversary is coming up in July, so we have an anniversary envelope in here for now. We have our vacation envelope is all filled up and ready for Hawaii. Kayaking is something that we're going to be doing on our vacation in Hawaii, so we have a cash envelope for that. This right here is just a blank sticker that um, is underneath the lamination, so I wrote over this with Sharpie. This can come off with just some normal rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip, and you can rewrite it whatever you want to on here. Next up here in California, we have to have a real ID, new driver's license type thing, so I needed to save up some money for that, so I have it saved up ready to go as soon as I need to order that. We have our date night envelope, an envelope for doctor visits for co-pays. We haven't been funding this because we already have money in here already and we haven't had to use the doctors often yet. So as soon as this starts to get low, we'll start refilling it again. And then our last important one is our bank envelope. This is if we ever have money that's all filled up and ready to go and we need to transfer it back into our bank, I take the money out, I put it into this envelope, I give it to my husband, and he takes it and goes and puts it in the bank. So this really is the only envelope that technically ever leaves the house. The rest of them just stay here in order for me to keep everything organized. So those were the envelopes that I use monthly that you guys see in our video. Next, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some envelopes that we don't technically use every month, but you will see in some upcoming videos. So first up, we have our AAA envelope. We were using this as a sinking fund envelope, but we no longer needed to do this because it was paid in January. So in a few months, we'll add this one back into the rotation so that we can start saving up for our AAA membership that we use each year. Next up, I have one for my hair and getting my nails done. To, getting my nails done is something that I cut out of our budget when we started our Dave Ramsey budget. Um, and same with getting my hair done frequently. So I do have these envelopes. They come in handy, but I don't use them all the time. If there's something coming up special, I might put this back into the rotation. But for right now, it's not needed. We also have... Um, this envelope is kind of funny. It actually worked out pretty nicely, but I accidentally had two envelopes stacked when I put it through the lamination. So as you can see in here is my birthday envelope and then his birthday envelope. And so it kind of works like an accordion folder. I didn't end up cutting them apart, but they were accidentally stacked when I put them through. So it's kind of cool, but his birthday is in November, right around Thanksgiving time. Mine's right after Christmas. So we have this envelope that will start going into our monthly envelope stuffing once we are done with our anniversary. 
We also have an envelope for each of us for Christmas. And something that we realized, me being a teacher, and this is our first year that we started our debt-free journey, we didn't really plan for spring break or now summer break very well. So I did make these envelopes. In the future, we'll probably have to start saving up for these things earlier. Not that we need to be spending money, but different things pop up and they come around and it kind of breaks your budget. So we have these two envelopes that we might put into the rotation when it gets closer to time for those. We also have a new car envelope for me. Not anything that's necessary right now, but when that time comes around, we want to be able to pay cash for that. So we want to be prepared for that as well. And in the future, we're going to be wanting kids and wanting a house. This is just an envelope we already have. We made them up, but we're not quite to that step yet. So those were some envelopes that we do use or will use, but now I'm going to show you some envelopes that I have made that we probably will never use. These are some things that we thought we would be going through into our bank account and pulling cash out. We just realized that that didn't really work well for us. My husband brings home cash tips every single day that he works his side hustle. So we've just used that cash as our cash envelopes. I know that doesn't work for everyone. Some people are going to go to the bank and take money out and put them into the envelopes, but all of our paychecks get automatically deposited into our bank account. So we're actually not going to be using any of that money in there for these things. So these are envelopes that we have made, but we are not going to be pulling cash out for it. So first up, we have gas envelopes. We just use our debit card if we ever need gas, so we are never putting any cash into there. Same for our rent. Our rent just comes out automatically. Once our paychecks are put into our bank account, our rent comes out automatically, so we never take any money out for rent. Our gym memberships come out automatically as well. Same with Netflix. Our gas comes out as well as electric. Internet comes out automatically. Same with our auto insurance. We may end up using this envelope in the future, but right now we're not really budgeting for any cleaning supplies. We just use that with our grocery or Costco money. Medicine and vitamins, a savings envelope. Groceries, we typically are only saving up cash for our Costco runs. Sometimes we put cash in here, but most of the time we just stick to our $60 budget a week in our debit account as well. Mad money for him and for me. This is just money that we're able to spend however we want to. But right now we're being super gazelle intense, so we are not using any of this extra money for ourselves. The last one, my husband's haircut. He's just been using our debit card. We've been budgeting that in for him. And this actually, we probably will start using this. We've been trying to save up some money for him to put back into his business to help grow his business. So once that starts happening, we'll be using this envelope as well. I thought it was cute with like the coffee stain going around. So that is our cash envelope haul and our cash envelope storage video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you have any other questions on cash envelopes, how we use them or how we store them, you can go ahead and ask them in the comments down below. You can also follow us on our Instagram page. We post some different stories about coloring in our bullet journal and what that looks like each week when my husband brings home his cash tips. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you in our next video.